Do 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 do. Okay. Apologize for being late. Five minutes late. Like to be on time. Let me set this up here real quick. Okay. Let me set this up real quick. Y'all know how this how this roll. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. Uh, perhaps I should have shouldn't even be doing this video live. I am so tired, but I'm here. Let's let's try to do this. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to. Another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program. Wherever you may find me on social media, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. And you're snuffed up seven. I am your soul brother, number one. With that said, I like to, uh, I, I really don't like this subject. I don't like any subject that does not help us improve ourselves as individuals. I do not like subjects, whereas uh, to talk about these things do nothing to help us with what one may call the, uh, find a solution to the problem uh, of the so-called Negro in America gives us something that we can work with in order to get up out of our current horrid condition. Um, I forgot the brother. It's a just, it's a young brother just got murdered by police in California, I believe. I forgot what his name is. Stephen Clark, I believe. Um, excuse me, I'm not really up on the news. Um, I think it's Stephen Clark, something like that. Uh, these things are going to continue and clearly we must like them we refuse to do what is necessary in order to get ourselves out of this situation so we will have more murders by police and who and who knows who else because we refuse to take the appropriate action in order to solve this problem and we who live today happily We'll pass this situation down to our babies. That is the number one reason why I never really wanted children. I did want children like uh, many people, but I did not want to bring my children into this situation. That is out of my control because I know that the people that's around me are a bunch of comfortable Negroes. I don't care. You can holler black power. You can be a Hebrew Israelite or more, whatever. You're sitting around here, clearly you're not, you're not acting like people who want to get out of this situation. Because if you did, you would be taking Brother Malcolm X's uh, advice by any means necessary, even if it means physical confrontation. I'm going to do this subject. I don't want to talk about this no more, really. I'm, I'm sick of it. I've talked about Minister Farrakhan, I've talked about the nation of Islam uh, enough. It's getting to the point where I, I just, I just don't. It's, it's just not necessary. But I want to talk about this for the final time. I shouldn't have to speak about it no more because this is going to put the uh, dot on the eyes. This is going to put the cross on the T's, dotting my eyes, crossing my T's. This is it. This is it. And I'm sending this message basically to uh, those who believe in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Minister Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam. I want y'all to, and those who support, those who uh, are influenced by such teachings. In fact, really, what I what I am about to present really goes for any religious genre, any. Now, let's talk. We're not gonna talk a long time. I should be able to get through this within the next uh, 40 minutes, I believe, probably. 
let, let, let's talk this out here. And let me say this by beginning this way. I was working with a fellow, a brother actually, and uh, I gave him some advice. I told him, don't do that, man. We're going to have some problems. But guess what? He don't want to listen to me. He's hostile, and arrogant. He don't have to listen to me. And we ended up having some problems. And then he looked at me. He didn't have nothing to say. I was right. And, you know. <laughs> so I felt good about myself. I gave this man advice and he did not take it. You know, one of those I told you so moments. We so proud when we can tell somebody, I told you so, I told you so, because we're so smart. So we continue to work together and then the script flipped. He told me, he said, hey, don't do that. Don't, and you know, we're going to have some problems. And you would think I would have a different attitude than him. You, you would think. But no, I took the attitude that he took because how can you tell me anything? I'm just as smart as you are. In fact, I have more experience in this than you do. I've done this before. You can't tell me about this situation. And guess what? la di da yours truly in the same situation. Why? felt so stupid. I would not have had to feel so stupid if I had took my own advice and listened to him just like he should have listened to me. But I was a fool. He was a fool. We both looked stupid because we would not listen to each other because I'm smarter than him and he's smarter than me. But the difference between him and I when the when all when all the dust settled, I told him, "Man, you was right. I apologize." He didn't tell me you was right. He just was silent. He didn't want to say nothing. He was embarrassed. And I told, him, I said, "Man, I feel real stupid. I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry. I should have took your advice." That's all you have to do. So he goes home with all this inside himself, he won't let it out because he feels embarrassed. He feels like a fool for what he done. But I feel better because I stood up and told him, I said, man, you was right. I feel so stupid and dumb. You was right. I apologize for not taking your advice. It feels so good when you can do that and be sincere when you do it be sincere and i was because I, I i still remember that as i'm telling you the story i remember that till this day felt so stupid because i didn't take his advice all this to say what there's a controversy right now going on between the nation of islam young pharaoh General Sarasun Seti, the Nation of Islam, many of the members of the Nation of, of Islam don't like the words coming from young Pharaoh Sarasun Seti. All this, people are all upset. Death threats, perhaps, words of anger. For what? For what? The only thing we have to do here in this situation is just accept the reality, accept what we've done, and things, the road would be much smoother. But when you hold that inside yourself and try to pretend like you can't be in error, when you can do no wrong, you're setting yourself up for failure and some problems that you should not have because you should be striving to be a humble person and you have become like what I was and like that brother was, we became hasidity and arrogant. 
So Elijah Muhammad comes up and brother Malcolm X, their names come up. The reason why we talk about Elijah Muhammad and what Elijah done, the reason why we talk about Malcolm X and what Malcolm X done, because we're doing nothing. You're building nothing. You're doing nothing. So you have free time to run your damn mouth about Elijah Muhammad and what Elijah Muhammad did 50 damn years ago, what Malcolm done 50 years ago, and talk about the same stuff over and over and over again because you're not taking the appropriate action. You're not doing the right thing. So you keep rehashing things and allow deceased people that should be rested in peace. They can't rest in peace. Malcolm can't rest in peace. Elijah Muhammad can't rest in peace. What they've done and what they've done is over. It, it, what are you talking about them for? Because we don't have nothing else to do. You're not building nothing. You're not successful in nothing that you do. So you go back, Marcus Garner, Harriet Tubman, Denmark Vesey, Malcolm X, over and over, talking about what they've done. Because you're doing nothing. So you because if you was doing something, then you could talk about what you're doing. But you're not bragging about what you're doing because you're not accomplishing nothing. So it's always bringing up the dead. Y'all love to worship dead folks. And that's what your brand of spirituality is, the worship of the dead. Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, Marcus Garner, John Henry Clark. Same folks over and over again. They all deceased. And anybody who is alive, you want to give them hell. You was not good to Elijah Muhammad. You was not good to Malcolm. You was not good to Marcus Garvey. You wasn't good to none of these people that you're praising. Only until after they are dead. Then all of a sudden, video, just, just endless praise. Dr. King gave the man hell. But now all of a sudden, after they are gone and cannot help you no more. Now it's just talk about them all over, over hours and hours. For what? I want to talk about this. And I want to talk to the Muslims because y'all should know better. You're smart. You're supposed to have the supreme wisdom. Why are you acting the way that you're acting? So damn emotional. Didn't you learn anything from Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad, that conflict? You didn't learn nothing. Same old stuff over and over again. What is your problem, FOI? What is your problem, MGT? What is up with some of y'all? You become so damn sick. Let me talk to you. You have to understand something here. And we have to accept the fact that people are people, we have error, we make mistakes. When you put somebody into these categories of divine, we're going to talk about that. You think divine people don't make mistakes. You think people that are sent by God don't make mistakes. That's a lie. And you should know better if you know any kind of basic scripture. You know that divine people, those chosen by God, can have make mistakes. How did all this start? It started by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This this what kicked it off. What kicked it off was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was having an affair with young teenage children or whatever young women. We're not going to talk about. We're not going to talk about did the Nation of Islam murder Malcolm X. I don't care. We're going to talk about what is for real facts. We know. We're not going to talk about speculation and things of this nature. We're going to talk about what we actually do know. We do know that Elijah Muhammad 
had affairs with young women. And y'all call these women his wives, but he did not call these women his wives. He put them out of the nation for fornication, and he was the one that they was fornicating with. He did not call them his wife. The only one that he called a wife was Sister Clara. He did not call. Where's the information? Where's your paperwork? To show that he called them a wife or he was, he was, uh, went to some courthouse in America and married, even though it's against the law, people still will go to, go to the courthouse and get married. He did not call them his wives. He simply said, according to the Quran, I need to spread my seed. That's what he said. Now, if you're spreading your seed, for what purpose? So your seed is grown now. All the children by Elijah Muhammad are grown. What was the purpose? What are they supposed to be doing? The reality of it is, the reality of it is, this is nothing but exploitation of women like they usually do in the church. These preachers mess with these women, young women, old women, whatever. And, and nowadays, they, they, mess with, uh, they, they mess with men, uh, you know, like Eddie Long or whatever. <laughs> There's a reason why he's called Eddie Long. <laughs> but that's all that it is. It's the usual exploitation of women. Women have been exploited by men for centuries. And we use religion and these men in these positions of, of influence always Always, well, well, not all of them, but mo a lot of times they take advantage of the fact that they can get these women very easily. Because if it wasn't for him being who he was, I very doubt if these young women would have anything to do with this man that was old enough to be their great great grandfather, probably. Now, if Elijah, if these was his wives, why didn't he tell the believers? Why is it not in the actual teachings? I'm the messenger of God. I can have 10 wives. This was not taught. This was something kept hidden. It was a secret. Then the secret got out. And most times secrets get out because if you can't keep it to yourself, it's somebody always going to leak it, especially when you piss somebody off. I'm going to tell. And they start telling. And what was secret slowly comes out into the public knowledge. This is called deception, y'all. This is deception. I know that you love Elijah Muhammad. I love, I love Elijah Muhammad too. But the bottom line, this was deception because this should have been part of the teaching. He should have been able to say to the believers, I am the messenger of God. I am allowed 10 wives. Either we take it, like he said, or let it alone. However, but he did. It was kept secret. This is deception because you're teaching us and we thought that you was telling us to be monogamous, that we had nothing to do. We were not practicing polygamy. Well, at least you wasn't practicing polygamy. This is deception. That's wrong, y'all. I don't care who it is. Wrong is wrong, right is right. This is what kicked it off. This is what made Malcolm very upset because he was part of something and he found out that it's not what it seemed to be. Something else is going on in the background. And he definitely wasn't told. I was upset when I first heard about it myself. I'm like, what? But I accepted it for what it was. Just because your father or your mother or cousin or wife, just because they do something wrong, do that mean you hate them or dislike them? But they done wrong. Elijah Muhammad was wrong. Just because he's divine or messenger does not mean he should have told the followers that this is what we what I can do. The prophets of God in your Bible and Quran, many of them, such as Noah, Noah got drunk, remember? Many of the wise people and the prophets in your scriptures they was wise, they was prophets, but they screwed, they messed up. 
we're going to continue to talk about the era of Elijah Muhammad. I mean, he just, I mean, come on. He's just a man. And he, it was, it was error. We should have, the followers and the believers should have been told. That's just the bottom line. This deception, deception is what kicked it all off. And eventually, Malcolm paid for it, for somebody else's deception with his life. And the sad thing about it, nobody is the winner. Because 10 years later, the nation of Islam, after the death of Elijah Muhammad, was destroyed. The end. And you earn destruction. Because you don't have the right mentality. You did not evolve. You did not mature. You should have accepted your wrong. We were wrong. We are in error. But you made excuses for your wrong. You make excuses for your mistakes. Because we are God. God don't make mistakes. And that's a mistake just by saying that. And you lost 40 years of work under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and you lost all of it. None of it was saved. And so now you have Minister Louis Farrakhan, and you have all these offshoots of the Nation of, of Islam, and you could put all of them together, and it is not, it's not, it's not it, don't, it don't even come close to what the Nation of Islam was or could have been, because you was on your way. The Nation of Islam was on your way to something great, but it all fell apart and you don't deserve it. You want, you're not ready. And now you are being put in the same situation. You're being tested by Allah again. Are you worthy? And you're failing with this stuff that y'all putting out, this anger, the same type of attitude that they had back in the, in the first resurrection, I guess that you would say. You're doing the same, have the same mentality, same mindset. Because you believe that the nation rise and it'll, it'll never fall again. Keep believing that. There's nothing in this reality in life that can't fall again. Because as your scriptures say, the grass cometh, cometh up, then it withereth away. Things are always rising and falling in our reality. But you believe it can't fall again. No, it can fall and it will never. You got a second chance. What you gonna do with it? To continue with the mindset and the behavior that you have right now, you're not gonna make it. I'm telling you this. So Elijah Muhammad started all of this. You are supposed to be the people of peace, the nation of Islam, nation of peace. Your behavior now and your behavior back then is unacceptable. Many believers, when this thing with Malcolm X came out and how they were responding to Malcolm and how they done Malcolm, many people began to leave the nation because they listened to my words, because they knew the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They also read their Quran. And what was, and what was done to Malcolm, what was being done to Malcolm is against Nation of Islam doctrine, and also it was against the Quran. That's why many of them left. Not necessarily to follow Malcolm because it was against the Quran and even Nation of Islam teachings. That's why. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. You support wrong and you're going to get what's coming to you. I'm telling you this. You will be destroyed. Never to rise again. And that's a fact. And it all started off with Elijah. When instead of protecting and defending your actions, the only thing you had to do is say, hey, I can do this. I can have 10 Why I should have let y'all know. And just, just admit to your error. And then 
the people can take it or let it alone. Making excuses for wrong. That's not what the teaching is supposed to be about. Y'all making excuses for being wrong. I can't do it. I can't do it. If I'm wrong, I'm just wrong. That's just the bottom line, y'all. You can't do that. Mm. Listen. Elijah Muhammad is the messenger of God. Is there anything added on to that title? I want y'all to talk to me tonight or later whenever you hear these words. I want y'all to talk to me. We finished, we're getting ready to talk now for real. Elijah Muhammad, his title, Elijah Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. Y'all got it? There is nothing else added to the title. What is a messenger? Many of you have messenger on your telephone, right? What does that mean? You are able to get a message. Is there anything added to that? No. It's a messenger. Elijah Muhammad is the messenger of God. Elijah Muhammad is not God. Elijah Muhammad taught that Wallace Farad Muhammad was God and he was the messenger, meaning that he was taught by this by God to deliver a message. No more, no less. There was nothing added to it. He's a messenger. You could take the message or leave it alone. Many of you say, and you make this claim, well, you know Elijah Muhammad made Malcolm X. No, he did not. Well, you know, you as a Muslim, Elijah Muhammad made you. No, Elijah Muhammad did not make me either. God made me. We speaking from a religious point of view. God made me. God made Malcolm. Elijah Muhammad, with his, with his old people followers, because when Malcolm X joined the Nation of Islam, a bunch of old people, they really weren't doing a whole lot. Three or four temples or whatever. Wasn't a whole lot going on. Elijah Muhammad, we are speaking from a religious point of view. Elijah Muhammad, when will my help come? And so I heard Minister Louis Farrakhan said the same thing back in the day. When will my help come? Because you need something. This, you got to get something going here. How am I going to raise the people? How am I going to bring the message to the people with this? I can't do it with what I got right here. So Allah answered Elijah's prayer and gave him mouth. God raised Malcolm. The only thing Elijah Muhammad did was bring a message. He's the messenger of God. Messengers don't make men. God is the one that raises men up. And God answered the prayers of Elijah Muhammad and gave Malcolm to Elijah as a gift. And when you give somebody a gift, you don't expect them to throw your gift in the trash or abuse your gift. You hope that they're happy with your gift and take care of your gift, right? When you give somebody a gift. The messenger, when God sends people to the messenger, that's a gift to the messenger. And the messenger is a shepherd. To those who God sends to him, he's to take care. He's to take care of those of whom God brings to him. The messenger has no right to judge nobody that God's bring. Nothing happens without God's permission. You cannot judge another person. You're not in that position. 
Elijah Muhammad is in no position to judge Malcolm or call Malcolm a hypocrite or somebody a betrayer, Louis Farquhar. Nobody has the right or in a position to do that except God himself. Because God is the one that made Malcolm X. And you don't know the reason why God caused the things to happen, what they done, what happened. You don't know, have no reason. You don't, you don't, you, you, you are, you, you can't comprehend the mind of God. So you can't judge me and you can't judge Malcolm X on, on no believer and call nobody hypocrites and all this other crazy stuff. You're not in no position because you did not make Malcolm. You did not make me. God made me. God made Malcolm. None of you have no right to judge nobody. And then when it's your time, just like right now, the nation of Islam is being judged and exposed and you can't handle it, but you can judge other folks and call people hypocrites and, be, and they betray and all this other nonsense. But when it's your turn, you can't handle it. Leave it up to God. Let God handle it. You don't think God can handle? You don't think God could have handled Malcolm? You had to get off your own. Your, you had to get off your ass and do something. But the real enemy, you don't do nothing with. You don't really make no effort to hunt down the enemy. But this man, you just had this extreme hatred for. Him. None of us have a right to judge nobody in this matter. When God is involved, the nation of Islam teachings, the nation of Islam teachings, the original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker of the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. That's nation of Islam teachings, right? The black man is God. We got a problem here when it comes to Malcolm. Did it say, now you heard what I just said, did it say anywhere? Well, if you stop believing, if you betray the nation, the black man is no longer God. Where's the fine print? Does not say that. It says that the black man is God. Nation of Islam teaches, nation of Islam teaches, whenever you see a black man, you see God. So it don't make no difference whether you like me or not, whether you like Malcolm or not. When you see a black man, you see God. So when you began to hate, when you began to plan the murder, and when you began to suggest the murder of a black man, you are planning the murder of God. That's what you've done. And you think you're not gonna pay for something like that. You got to pay. You have to suffer some type of consequence for that. However, God has mercy when you begin to do the right thing and y'all ain't doing the right thing. That's why the whole nation was destroyed. 40 years of work, gone. I can't snap my finger. <laughs> gone just like that. You deserve to be destroyed. You plan the murder of God. Malcolm X was God. He's a black, he was, he's a black man. And every time you see a black man, you see God. The same thing that happens to us every day. You call each other nigger. And you threaten another black man. Or soul brother, I said from this roster. But for this video, use the nation of Islam teachings coming from that, from that viewpoint, we're saying black. Every time you see a black man, you see God. And you call God nigger. And the female is God too, and you call her a bitch and a hoe when you get mad. She's a queen and a goddess until you get angry. And she, she then all of a sudden, she's a whore and a bitch and all these other nasty words. You don't like what I say. You want to plan my murder. You plan the murder and assassination of God. And you think you're not going to pay for that? That don't change just because you don't like me. I'm still God. As far as, the, as far as the teachers is concerned, where do it say, well, if you stop believing, if you betray people, 
if you sit on the toilet wrong, I'm not God. The teacher said, I'm God. And you want to run around and hate God. Murder God. There was error in the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Remember the story of Moses. Moses was a prophet. Moses got to the point. Moses had direct connection to God, just like Elijah Muhammad had direct connection to God, right? Now, Moses got to the point, remember in the story, Moses got to the point where he thought he had the power. Where he got to the point where he thought he didn't need God. I'm doing all this myself. And that's what you saw in the behavior of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's all about me. Follow me. He's not saying, come to God, come to Allah, come follow me. Well, I will lead you to Allah, but follow me. It's all about me. These women for me. It's all about me. My, my seed. It's all about me. I made Malcolm. You said that Elijah Muhammad made Malcolm. You mean to tell me you God is not in the equation? Huh? Oh, wow. Wow, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it with this type of attitude. Minister Louis Farrakhan had the nerve, 1993, I believe. He praised the men that murdered Malcolm X. Here you are, the people of peace, the, the nation of Islam, the nation of peace, and you have your representative on the roster praising murder. <laughs> praising murder. So what if you don't like Malcolm, but you're going to praise the men who went into the Audubon ballroom and shot down an unarmed man in front of his wife and children? Isn't, isn't it not said in the Quran also that Muslims should not murder another Muslim? You encourage this. You put it in the Muhammad speaks, Malcolm's head chopped off. He's a man worthy of death. Y'all spreading this poison until the poison finally took effect and these somebody was stupid enough, ignorant enough, they murdered God. Mm. You call Malcolm X a hypocrite. You kick Malcolm X was kicked out of the nation. But I tell you, see, you really don't know what a hypocrite is. A hypocrite comes from the time when uh, men used to dress up like women because they did not allow women to be actresses. That a woman could not be an actor. So in order to so to play the female part, men dressed up look like women to be something that they are not. That's a hypocrite. Malcolm never was a hypocrite. He always believed in the teachers. He always continued to acknowledge and wanted to come back to the nation. He was not a hypocrite. He was kicked out of the temple for reasons unknown that we may never know the real reason. Now, during that speech with, when Minister Farrakhan was speaking, basically he said, who are you to be in our business anyway? Who are you to talk about? It's none of your business. Because a nation deal, just like they do, like just like the United States do, deal with their uh, uh, people who betray traitors and whatever. You can't tell a nation what we're doing with our traitor. This, this, this is uh, sort of messed up because you're saying that you did not have nothing to, to do to do with the murder of Malcolm X. But yet and still, you're going to turn right around and say, who the hell are you in our business if we did what we done? It's none of your business. This is our, this is, uh, this is our nation. We raised Malcolm. We made Malcolm what he what he was. You can't tell us how what we do. Well, 
Did you murder Malcolm or you didn't? Make up your mind. Of course, common sense tells you, ain't no, nobody in their right mind is going to confess to murder. I want to remind you also that Captain Yusuf Shaw, it was reported on his deathbed, he was present during the firebombing of Malcolm X's home. Then later on, of course, as you know, he was assassinated. But the Muslims didn't have nothing to do with it, right? See, common sense, something here is wrong. But that's not that's neither here nor there because you should not, you should never have done and put all this anger and hate on the man to begin with. Because your leader was wrong. That's what kicked the whole thing off. That's what kicked the whole thing off. Now, Malcolm said, please, I'm no longer going to blame the Muslims because overseas, there were some guys following me and whatever. And I know, I trained the FOI or whatever. I know what the Nation of Islam can, can, can do. And I know what it can't do. And I'm going to stop saying that the Nation of Islam is trying to murder me because these guys are following me overseas. However, where did Malcolm get murdered? He did not get murdered overseas. He got murdered in the good old United States of America where he knew that these Muslims, crazy Muslims, wanted to kill him. And it was no, it was no Chinese, it was no Arabs, it was no Caucasians that done it. It was American Negroes that pulled the trigger, affiliated with the nation of Islam. Common sense should tell us, you can, you can, you can deny all you want to, something here, all of a sudden when you get angry, this man ends up dead. Nobody else. Nobody else that is that interested. Every day you're doing something to talk about this man. You can't keep this man out of you, out of your mouth, even right now, over 40 some years after this man's death, 50 years after this man's death, you're still talking about Malcolm X. He's a traitor, he's this, that. that. You will not allow the man to rest in peace. Those of you who know wasn't even in the situation, this goes to show you how sick you are. As you refuse to accept responsibility of your error and that your messenger, even though he did great things, but he did wrong here. He was in error. That's what kicked this whole thing off. And you don't want to accept that. You set up God for assassination. And even if the CIA, listen, I'm going to end on this point. I'm going to end on this point. Even if the CIA did assassinate Malcolm, the Nation of Islam helped by setting up the atmosphere, the perfect atmosphere, so God could be murdered. You still have to accept responsibility for what you do. And the best thing I heard Minister Farrakhan say, well, you know, I, I said some things and I created, helped create the environment for his, but there's no apology. Where's the apology to Malcolm's family? Where's the apology to us as a black community for your actions? There's no apology. It's still arrogance. It's still this uppity type. You can't tell me what to do. This is your problem. Until you become humble, we were taught in the nation of Islam to be a humble people, and you refuse to be humble. You don't never do nothing wrong. The only thing you do is, just like Mr. Farrakhan say, well, I, I admit I did this, but you don't really apologize. You don't really say I was wrong. You don't talk about, you don't, you, you can't accept the fact that your messenger did, was in error. That's right. Where's the humility? Where's the apology? Where's the sincerity? There is none. You're not going to make it. You have no future. So go ahead and kill some other people. Go ahead and keep running your mouth. Might as well do it while you can because you have no future at this rate. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. It's over for you. You set God up 
for assassination. You should be shaming yourself. The people of peace. What kind of, if you represent peace, I hate to see uh, violence if you represent peace. What kind of peace do you represent? What kind of nation are you, what type of nation are you trying to build with this type of behavior? Wrong is wrong. And I know you want to judge me. What I'm saying is incorrect. You can't prove it. Bring it to me. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. There's nothing wrong with being wrong as long as you make yourself right. You cheat on your wife. Okay, you messed up. But be sincere and try to heal what you've done and apologize. Where's the humility? That's right, busy. The humility. Be sincere and save your marriage. Because we are human beings. We make mistakes, including the prophets and y'all divine folks. This goes to this is the same message going out to those who believe in Jesus or, or, or any of these other gods. The same thing. You have to be humble. You make a mistake, okay. How can we straighten this up so we can continue to move? If the nation of Islam had done that, it would not have been destroyed. You are on your way to another destruction and you're never going to fall. You're never going to rise again. Matter of fact, really, in reality, you should never have been allowed to rise again to begin with. The reality of it is because you don't, you, you're not maturing. You're not evolving. You're staying in the same place have the same mindset as those back in the day, and you know they messed up really, really bad. Just to say that Elijah Muhammad was in error does not change the good works that he accomplished. That does not change anything. We are human beings, we make error. We are capable of making mistakes. So what? When you make a mistake, let's try to let's try to make it right and move forward. The, the attitude that we got now, you're going to go backwards. We don't want to do that. Come on. Let's just deal with it as let's just deal with the truth, the reality of it. And then let us move on to better things. I'm tired of talking about Elijah Muhammad, Harriet Tubman, Marcus Garvey. I'm tired of all these posts, Marcus Garvey. What are we going to do? That's the question. What are you going to do now? And you better do it quickly. Time is not going to continue to wait on us. When the bus leaves, you're going to be in bad shape. Keep playing around, play, playing these games. This is serious business. That's right. We still should give praise to the honorable Elijah Muhammad. But he made mistakes. That's just the bottom line, y'all. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So what? We made a mistake. People died over it because we did not handle it right. Let's not continue on that path. Let's learn from their mistakes so that we can move forward. We got a long road to go, y'all. Either you're going to sink or you swim. Time is not going to continue to wait on you. We need to grow up. Stop being childish and, 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 a, and a hypocrite. Because a hypocrite is being something that you're not. And many of you are hypocrites. You don't want black unity. You really don't want nothing. You are a comfortable nigger slave. That's what you are. You are, you are a hypocrite because you don't really want this. Because if we really want it, you would really see us straightening our act up so we can get it. Just like when a man chases a woman, he 
does what he got to do. He straighten up, walks tall, work four or five jobs, whatever he got to do to get this woman. And you're not acting that way. With that said, thank you for listening. Uh, as always, uh, shout out to the, the, the chat room, uh, Busy and uh, Jafar, Jahar, black men is in the house. And those of you who are listening, I know it, I know it hurts. I know, I know. But let's, it's, it's, it's better to accept the truth of things. Accept the reality of it. Get over your hurt and make Elijah Muhammad proud. Let's make Malcolm proud and Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth and Denmark Vesey and all those that came before us. Let's make them proud. We have the, we have the economics. We have the manpower, the sister power. We got everything that we need. The only thing we have to do is straighten our act up and do it. Just like Nike in the Nike commercial. Only thing we got to do is just do it. With that said, let me get out of here, man. I am so tired. I'm so tired out of my mind, but I just wanted to get this off my chest. I wanted to talk to us. And if I'm in, and if I'm in error, I'll be happy to say, you know, y'all, I'm, I'm wrong. No problem. I feel good because I don't have to deal with that burden no more. Let's get that off our chest. Thank you for listening, y'all. As uh, uh, as Don Cornelius, how you doing, Mims? Mims said, let us admit fault and move forward as the prophet Jesus of Nazareth taught us to love one another. That's correct. Absolutely right on, on point. That's right. Let us admit fault and move forward. Absolutely. I agree with that 1,000%. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. With that said, thank you for listening. Those in the chat room, thank you for joining me. Uh, so I wouldn't be here all by myself. It's a lonely world out there, you know. <laughs> and uh, as Don Cornelius always would say in parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. See y'all hopefully tomorrow.